I wanted you to, to uh, talk a little more about the um, savings, because I think that's an extremely interesting part of the book, of how you can help people increase savings in a kind of unobtrusive way. Yeah, so probably the domain in which behavioral economics has had its greatest impact is in the domain of retirement saving. And uh, you know, as, as I think most of you know, um, once upon a time there were pensions. Uh, before mo many of you were born, but uh, dinosaurs like us remember pensions. Hal had a very nice one at UC Berkeley, um, where all you did is work, and then when you were done working, you got a paycheck. And you got that paycheck uh, until you died. Uh, now you have to figure out, you have to join the 401k plan. You have to figure out how much to save and how to invest it. Uh, and then you're going to, at some point, figure out what to do with that money. Uh, so that's asking a lot of people who don't know very much about uh, financial markets. So. The first step is just to get people to join the plan. And there, um, we encouraged people to make a very simple change, which is to change the default. And um, so this is called automatic enrollment. And under the old regime, when you're first eligible for the plan, you get a pile of papers to fill out. And if you don't fill those out, you don't get in the plan. Uh, under automatic enrollment. I assume you have automatic enrollment at Google? Dude. Yes. Good. Um, then you're told, unless you fill out this form, we're going to enroll you. Um, however, uh, does anybody, what is the saving rate at which you get started if you're automatically enrolled at Google? 10%. 10%. Excellent. That is really good. I'm impressed. I'd say 90% of companies that use automatic enrollment enroll people at 3%. And the reason for that is sad and funny. So back in the mid-90s, when this idea was new, companies would come to me and say, you know, we'd like to do this, but we're worried about whether it's legal because we're going to sign people up without their permission. So I called a friend of mine who worked in the Treasury Department and said, can, can you get some letter written clarifying that this is legal? And he said, yeah, I can do that. And so he and somebody from the IRS drafted a letter. And the way those letters tend to be written is you give a general statement and then you give an example. So for example, suppose there's a company and it signs people up for their pension plan at a 3% saving rate. And it's still now the case that most companies sign people up at 3%, which, yeah, so this is called an unintentional anchor. Uh, and it's had the effect of anchoring people at a very low saving rate, which created the need for another behavioral economics idea that a former student of mine, Shlomo Bonarzi, and I uh, developed that we call Save More Tomorrow. And Save More Tomorrow is based on the premise that we all have more self-control in the future. So I'm planning a diet, but not tonight, and probably not this week, or at least not until the end of this book tour. Um, so, you know, uh, Lord, give me strength, but not now, you know that. So, so uh, the idea of Save More Tomorrow is you invite people to increase their saving rates in the future when they get a raise. And um, so modern uh, 401k plans now have automatic enrollment and 
you don't need it so much at Google if you start people at 10, but automatic escalation to get them up to 10 or some number higher. And then that plus a sensible default investment vehicle like a target date fund. You know, my mantra when I'm in the UK with the nudge unit and we're talking to these ministers, uh, in, in virtually every meeting, I would find myself repeating the same three words, make it easy. <laughs>